machine back up. Yep, there we go. I need to change the name. Uh, Warwick Dugla Ducklings. There we go. Done. Alright, we're back. Uh, I've got a few ideas for some new headstones. There are a man down though. Morphling bang coming out at the start. I do not want to see that. Must be a respect ban, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, it's completely out of nowhere. To be fair, he is overpowered. He is overpowered. I mean, that would be reason to ban him normally, but they didn't ban him last time, so. But they're against a different team, you know, different team, that different steam. That is, that is very true. Now, Spirit Break are going to be banned on the other side. Could be a respect ban, could just be because he's fucking annoying. And a Wind Ranger ban again, so I think they just hate Wind Ranger. She's Which, also pretty strong, especially in pubs lately. That is true. That's well, nice. she did get nerfed a lot, didn't she? I don't know. I just know she was pretty pretty. In, in pro. She was losing a lot. I think she was dubbed Lose Ranger for a while. So lost every single fucking game, no matter what. Uh, next assassin man coming out next. Very curious. And the Jakiro pick comes out again. So they they just like Jakiro. So what can I say? Understandable, like very likable hero. Yeah, it's a dragon. Like come on, twin-headed one. Oh, even. Not just a dragon. Yeah, exactly. Twin-headed dragon. <laughs> He's also well, it's better than a one-headed dragon, you know. Yeah. You know, two, two heads, two wings, two, two, two hind feet, two front feet, two tails. I don't think tails? he has feet. I think he has legs. Yeah, 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 go suck it. I will not. Uh, I actually meant air. Go suck in air. I do believe. Yeah, no, you just said you wouldn't. How about that, huh? Well, yeah, but you hadn't clarified what you were talking about yet. Well, you didn't need it, apparently. Pug not coming out? A solid first pick these days. Uh, Realized pushing potential, lanes well, can heal up, and the Medusa coming afterwards. So, gonna be able to just, like, suck into the Medusa. Uh, since she's almost always full health, she'll be just getting mana pumped into her the whole time. Plus, you can reset if she's getting focused down with physical damage. So, uh, a very strong starting duo here by the Warwick Ducklings. Fucking tryhards, man. <laughs> That's just rude. Come on. This is energy. This is serious just business. Joking, of course joking. they're going to try hard. Come on. That's true. Tryharding is good. What, yeah. what are you gonna do? Lose? Yeah, exactly. They would. They wouldn't do that in in NSC. This is once again very serious business. But I'm more excited but, for the Jakiro draft. Whatever it's the rest of them are gonna be. Uh, the, the SE and NSC are for serious. And the N is not for not. That's a common misconception. It does for not national. stand for not serious. National don't, serious. Don't think it does. I, I won't. I won't. Alright, Klinks coming out second pick here. Signature hero for Stanhope. Yes, indeed. Uh, probably. Well, speaking of like seen in the four position, he will likely not play it in the four position. He prefers to carry Klinks. Uh, we're, we'll be curious what he'll be picking up on the Klinks, but. Uh, I would love to see a nullifier come out so you can start the Pugna in the back lines and stop him from getting all those heals out the whole time. I'm going to be banning out the anti mage, which cu curiously they did not actually pick on the Holloway Herald into the Medusa. So, are going to be safeguarding them from that. Uh, Storm going to be banned out on the other side so they don't get the, the Pugna Storm and just suck him off the whole day. Really seems to be focused on this for some reason. What? I mean, it's Pug. That's what he yeah. does. It's his life purpose. Second time you mentioned it. Yeah, it's, it's Pug. That's what he does. It is what he does. He does drain some life. Honestly, the first time was just a. Uh, that was the um, Saber Light reference. Oh, of course, of course. 
Now the PL ban actually coming out, so they think it might still be a Clink's Clink's four potentially. On the other hand, Rubik and Kotal going to be banned. Kotal, I guess, also uh, here that loves pumping mana into into heroes, so they don't want that have an unkillable Medusa on their hands. Rubik, I suppose the Jakiro Ice Path. They don't want to get have that stolen. I mean, banning out Slark as well, so they're banning exclusively carries here. They really don't think this is a this is a carry clinks, or if it's a carry clinks, they're not scared of it. That's also possible. Maybe they want it to be a a carry clinks. The next ban, or the next pick, I should say. I'm probably going to be the next. Their other support for the ducklings, although they, ah, uh, they don't, they, they don't know that's a clink's carry. We don't know either, but they don't think so at least. So they probably won't be picking that off thing. They'll be picking Io instead. So more save uh, into the Medusa. That does mean they're very low on lockdown in their sports though. Pugna Io don't bring any sense to the table. Nido's Medusa. Now she has an ice, but that'll be later on. They're gonna need to be. Uh, they're gonna need to get that in their off lane and mid here. And especially with a clinks, it could be tough. You might be able to run free for the fight, gunning people down with his bow and arrow. So punch for the heralds here. Actually, most likely going to be an off laner if I had to assume. So then they they do know the enemies carry and support already, so they they know exactly the match they're going to be getting. But it could still be a punch four as well. Not very commonly picked up these days, the punch support, but a good hooker will always manage to make it work. That's true. As long as you have a good hooker, you can play punch any team. So they didn't did not have a plan for a dual lane here. We're still debating what to pick up. It's going to be a puck actually, so they're going to pick up their mid first. Which is definitely curious. Curious. It means Indeed. they're they're giving Warwick Ducklings the opportunity to get the counter pick here. For that middle lane. Or at least they'll know what's coming up. Uh, this was first pick for the Heralds, I believe, so Warwolf will, will be getting the, the last pick either way. And I'll... I suppose it'll be, the, it'll be Warwick looking for their offlaner next. They could pick mid as well, since they already know the matchup. Primal Beast! Uh, that's going to be able to easily run down a Jakiro, easily run down a Clinks. It's going to be able to, to mess with Puck a lot by just standing on top of him. I did base damage in the lane as well will be, be good as a matchup. Pudge will be able to take the trample for a while with the Flesh Heap. But on the other hand, Primal Beast has a lot of cancels for the Dismember. so And the ability to escape potentially if he gets hooked. So I, that's a really nice pick coming out from the Ducklings here, I think. Maybe hard to match him up with the IO, but the, if he does go in with the Tether on top and the Overcharge, it'll be very tanky, we are getting pumped up the whole time, it won't go down easily. And the uh, the Spell Amp from the Overcharge, which I'm not sure if it's on the chart, but might be able to, to push him over the edge and get him some extra kills. Leave it on the... Ags. Actually, I'm not Ags. sure anymore. No, it's on the Ags. That's for the, that's for the balls, dude. It's for the balls. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, it's just what I know. <laughs> uh, I mean, someone, another carry ban coming out here for the Warwick. They really don't think this is a Clink's, uh, Clink's carry. 
Uh, I I suppose Pudge probably is a support then. Oh, that's oh, that's a Void Spirit ban as well. So they, they think this is a problem with the offlane, which would actually also make a lot of sense against Clink's carry. Uh, it'll be very hard for Clink's carry to get him off of him. With Io as well pumping up from behind, it's gonna be very painful for them, I think, in that lane. So I I I feel like well, Holloway is kind of between a rock and a hard place here. They keep that Clink's carry and probably get ran down by the Primal Beast a lot. Or they try and put it on four, but then they have to pick from a very limited carry pool. And it's definitely going to be a bit tough for them, I think. They're at least thinking on their last ban here as well. To make sure they get something good out. Plus, I, I feel like they probably don't know what positions Holloway has. So they still have the two heroes that can kind of be flexed. Could you be running out the Ursa last? Okay. Now, what will Holloway's last pick be? I'm not sure if there's anything I would like to see, really. And it needs an initiator, most likely, unless Pudge can take care of it. It needs some kind of way to stop this Medusa and Primal Beast from just running them over as well. They probably don't need anything to connect with the Puck for gangs, because they have Pudge and Clinks should be able to take care of that between the two of them. Although for if we're talking a Medusa with an Io Pugna behind them, they may they may just not have the damage. We are to get something that lanes well into Medusa. On top. Uh, so it's gonna be it's gonna be Necrophos. Uh, so just going to be ignoring the Medusa matchup, I guess, and trying to burst down the Primal Beast. It's gonna help them sustain through the fights as well, but it is tough. Io has a lot of burst heal. Necrophos. Pugna. Yes, Necrophos, that's right. Um, Pugna. It's a lot of heals as well, and loves going Glimmer Cape usually, so it may be hard for Necro to get the size that you want, and gonna be picking up the Timbersaw last on Warwick. I don't know who their mid player is, but uh, it looks like it is going to be an offlane Pudge and uh, a carry Necrophos. What am I looking at here? But it, it is in need of support clanks, at least. Yeah, it, it looks like it's a carry Necrophos, so. They'll be playing into either Primal matchup or the Timber matchup. I think I would like... Hmm. I'm not sure actually. It may be hard for Primal to get enough damage out on Necro with Jakira there as well to slow down his movement speed. Necro does have a lot of health. They won't be getting that many levels on Primal Beast. So it's probably best that they put the Primal Beast mid. I think it has a better matchup in the Puck. And the Timber Soul will most likely be able to sustain to Necro. At least seeing what they do. 28 commends in 15 matches, very respectable. But did lose his last game on Io, so it might be looking good here for uh, for the Holloway Herald. Did lose one game, very high. Yeah. Meanwhile, you know, 14 and 6 on Jakiro. It's a very respectable score in his last 20 games. Prepare for battle. It's going to be a... Uh, it's just going to buy, be buying a little bit of stats on Puck, so... Not going to be getting that major damage output against a Primal Beast who has not bought anything at all. So, he's just chilling. Gonna be coming out with a wand on Medusa, so I'll just be looking to sustain against the tar bombs and clanks. 
The Tar Bomba. Tar Bomba. As we like to call him. It looks like it is going to be Timbersaw offlane. Judging by the tether on him. Boundfeast is actually surprisingly low damage. <laughs> Funny would have more than 66 base damage. A, oh, a big move coming out there on the bottom lane from the Heralds, actually. With the ward, we might be looking to hook whoever shows up on this rune. Unfortunately, the ward doesn't quite reach to show the actual rune, so... They might not be able to get the hook. Uh, Pugna actually pings out this this movement as well, so they most likely know. And yeah, Medusa is going to slither past and go over to his tower. So in the end, they're just going to be uh, going two for two on the runes here. Nothing major happening. Old classic. The old classic, yeah. Medusa just uh, doing the the old carry move of just standing under your tower, very respectable. I like to do it as well. Whatever happens, happens, you know, on the map. Now, he's going to be getting a D ward actually on Pugna, so a really nice spot there. Maybe st stream cheating. Yeah, it must be. Must be, must be. Nah, the, the, the stream didn't get linked anywhere, so they probably don't know. Now, he's actually going to be taking a lot of damage here on Pugna, but that was a salve and he'll be able to waddle away, so he'll be fine. Meantime, up top. Oh, that's actually a. It's a carry pudge. It's a carry pudge and an offlay necro, unless they just switch the lanes. So that is actually going to be a, a better matchup for the Timbersaw here. All things considered. Be able to just. Whirling death down that pudge. Well, then, if he gets enough points in Rod, he might be able to just run down the, the Timber as well if he's not careful. Definitely have to balance that out. Quintan taking a lot of damage here. There's a blood grenade up as well. But uh is going to choose to back off here, but unless he's going to turn around. But the the hook misses and in the end it's just gonna take a lot of damage on Jakiro and be forced to back off on the tower. Down in the bottom lane, Pugna gets uh an extra set of tangos delivered over to him, so he'll definitely be sustaining and he's he's kind of taking all of the aggro from uh this dire offlane onto himself. He's gonna be able to decrap and walk out there as well, so he's just chilling while Medusa is farming up, getting big. That's the second point in the mana shield as well already, so quite tanky on the Medusa. Meanwhile in the mid lane. So it's the last hits. Looking about even so far. Although a couple extra last hits on Puck. I don't know, Puck on the uh, Primal Beast. Still just Bring that wave along with him, so no, there you go. Right now, I should be able to pull ahead a little bit. The bottom lane also going about even. The top lane going about even. They they love going even. Even Steven, as they say. As they say. So yeah, a little bit of damage here on the aisle actually from the the creep camp just laying into him, but. Timbersaw he is, of course, a universal hero now, so hits surprisingly hard. That overcharge is actually putting out these in right click damage. Mid lane still just a little bit of harass going on, nothing much. Pulling the wave here. Oh, the hook comes out onto the IO tethers onto the Timbersaw, so we want to have a tether away and is going to just go down. So a nice first blood here onto the Pudge, and that might let them pull ahead in this lane. And if they do, it might it might start getting hard for uh, Timbersaw quite quickly. Is they're gonna be pressuring the Timbersaw a bit here as well? But he's gonna miss that hook, and now onto the Jukiro actually. But has he gone a little bit too far? Io does come back in, and the Timber Chain comes back up, so he'll be able to get out. In the end, it is a one for zero trade here with the first blood going to Pudge. A nice, nice pick off here off the back of a, a really nice hook. The salve gonna be getting Timbersaw back up to full real quick, so he'll be fine to just keep standing in the lane. Oh, and a mid lane going forward onto Pug, but able to orb out, save that up. Phase shift as well, and doesn't take a lot of damage, so he'll be good to go. 
It's going to be uh, taking that bottom rune as well. Sends out the orb as well. Let's see, gets right back to that lane, doesn't miss. I miss his one TS, but who cares about that one? That one wasn't important. The end. Necro starting to pull ahead a little bit here in the bottom lane, but we're still coming in the tower and another pull coming out from Pugna. Just keep curing the farm for the Medusa. 71 tries as well, so it's going to be very hard to take down this very spammy lane of the, the Necrophos clanks. Be laying into the Pugna a bit again here, but uh, able to walk away again with Decrab. Here we are going to deliver over some raindrops and should be fine sustainable. He's getting a little bit low in the meantime. Timbersol getting a bit of damage up top, but actually it's the hero who's getting a little bit too low. But ooh, the whirling death just barely doesn't connect, and now Timbersol misses that second whirling. Uh, whirling death. Uh, Timber chain and gonna get taken down by the hook in the end. So Is it a bait? another nice pick off here, Pudge. It's a bait. And it's going to be building straight into a blink here, actually. So wants to start getting on top of these heroes like the. The Io and the Medusa, the Pugna as well. Another pull coming out here. Then you really need to block this pull camp, I think, on the Dire, but I've not managed to do so quite yet. Uh, Cardi is going to be coming in, but will be going down as quickly as he comes around. Will he get another shot off? He will. A little bit of damage into the Pugna here now, and doesn't have to degrab up quite yet. And Necrophos is just going to run him down, but ooh, but the Clinks actually goes down in the back line to the Medusa, and now it's a, a 1v1, but oh, actually a lot of, oh, and Puck comes over with the rotation, actually, is going to be snapping the coil immediately here on Medusa, so we'll be able to get out quickly, but they're running him down on the tower, they have Death Pulse, and he's going uh, to be going gone. down, so a nice rotation here from the Puck, and Io just barely not able to come in in time with that healing Lotus to to save his Medusa, and now he might be on the receiving end of a little bit of damage as well, but we'll be able to walk out in the end. So a nice couple kills here for that dire bottom lane, and be scared of the next Lotus as well, and now Timbersol is alone in the top lane, gonna be gone on here, gets a very short Timber Chain off, and he's just going to get brought it down very quickly, is it could make some distance though, and ooh, Io comes in through the gate, the hook is not able to make. Not able to contain him that quickly enough, so. In the end, he will be able to timber chain on. But he gets back, goes back in. Now with the blood grenade and the rod again, he's going to go down. So, Timbersol overstepping his hand here a little bit. And that's going to be another kill into the pocket of his Pudge. Up to three flesh heaps already. And it's, uh, it's looking good. Having a great time. And our Primal Beast now with the Max Trample is going to look to make a rotation potentially, but. He uh, catches wind of it on the Pudge and is able to make his distance, get back under the tower, and he'll be fine to keep going. Fuck, just gonna be picking up his treads. No, 1k lead overall now for the Dire, so I'm gonna get ahead a little bit. But in the end, this Pugna is just. He's getting fat money from these pulls, man. Although he's actually the lowest number from the game, so maybe not. Maybe he's just getting fat last hits. Medusa on the other Useless hand. Useless last hits, non-impact last hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Medusa on the other hand is, uh, she's sitting pretty. Uh, having a time of her life last in The one death doesn't do that much in the end to really keep her down, so. We get to just keep hitting creeps. It's gonna be building into that Manta, classic build. Eric's actually going to be going into the Necrophos here, but he's gonna turn around with the Reaper Scythe and just take down the Pugna and now. Looking for this Medusa. Playing enter a little bit, but the TP comes out here from the Primal Beast. Is going to be going in with the Onslaught. Wants the, the Necrophos and it looks like he's going to get him. Running him down and the Pulverize on top is going to bring him down. And now, Clings gets uproared. No points. And the Invis just, yeah, he doesn't have that level 6. He doesn't have any creeps to eat. So he's going to be going down as well under the tower. And Puck is nearby, but he uh, does not want to make the rotation. So... A nice double kill for the Primal Beast, but meanwhile in the top lane they're going in, they managed to take down Io, but TP from the Pug now secures the Jakiro kill in return. And now the hook, ooh, it's not gonna be long. Nice little dodge there from the Pug now, is able to escape. So in the end, overall that's a, uh, is that a free for one? Uh, very nice.
turn of events here for the Radiant. Able to get a little bit of that uh, gold lead back, and Medusa so going to be uh, picking up another Lotus here, and it's going to actually eat it right away. So it's not going to be saving that up. Now Crow, a little bit aggressively here, but neither side really has the damage. And top lane, nothing really going on. But oh, they're running down Puck in the mid lane. Actually, he's going to be able to put the silence off onto the high ground. No onslaught for 10 seconds, so it'll be fine. Now, Pudge. Ooh, a head shot on the Pugna there with the hook, but is he going to be able to take him down? The, the the life drain comes out, and he's he's actually going to turn around and just kill the Pudge. Get there with his uh, Primal Beast friend, and now he's looking for the Jikiro as well. He's going to be able to life drain up and go back up to full health just like that. So, Pugna, a, a Pugna 5. They're able to be real pesky here. And it, it cost them the life of the Pudge, who is actually opting to go back and go for an Magnum Scepter instead. So, let's get that big magic damage, but Timbersol sees it coming and is already building into the pipe inside. So, Necro, though, just going to be building into the Radiant. So, I feel like this is, uh, this is actually an, a carry Necro playing from the offlane here. Now, this is a Carty actually in the top lane, so this... This failed rotation from the Pudge onto the mid lane is going to be costing them a lot. The, the tower already down to half health. And Timbersaw, of course, can tank a tower for as long as he wants, so it'd be good to just keep that going. But let's continue tanking it here as well. Hook, gonna be cancelled. So. Chakram is up now as well, but in the meantime, in the bottom lane, Primal Beast has onslaughted in by the looks of it, but. He's going to turn around onto the Necro, but a lot of damage coming out. Snake slows them down, and it looks like he will be able to escape on the Primal Beast. So he'll be fine, thanks to his Io topping him up. And he's actually going to go back in now with the Onslaught. Catches a big hit onto the Necro pose, and does a lot of damage, but turns around, kills him off with the Reaper Scythe, and Puck has rotated as well. Necro does go down, snapping the coil here on both of them, but the cover of the stone case looks like they will be able to walk out the puck. Is he looking? He's not going to be orbing, so... Io is going to be fine. Probably doesn't want to get caught on the tower of... Eh, some Pugna or uh, Timbersol. They're laying into him, so he'll be careful. Pudge is actually going to TP down to the bottom lane as well. They want to keep this pressure up and... Gonna be hitting a hook straight out on the Pugna. And that's going to be another flesh shape. Luckily does not bite those pine cones. So, stacking up the heaps a little bit. Meantime, though, Medusa still just farming up. 1500 off his mantle now. The farming speed will really start to ramp up. Me. Just farming a wave up here. Going aggressive here on the Primal Beast. He's able to get the Pulverize off, so that's going to be some good damage. Onto the puck, but now the hook! Ooh! Doesn't connect. So unfortunately, the Primal Beast will live to see another day. Meantime, Timbersol just still setting up in his top lane, gonna take down the tower. It's not a get the last invoke, unfortunately, for zero. But he will be fine to keep going. In the meantime, in the bottom lane, actually, Primal Beast has made it go onto the Necrophose, but not able to do quite enough damage to finish him off. And now the Dream Coil comes in, locks him down. It, they are going to take down the IO first, so. Looks like Primal Beast will be most likely good to go to. Actually, he's gonna go back in onto the Necro with the Trample through. Ooh, does get the Jakiro, but Necro lives and scythes him down into the ground. Now, Medusa with the Stone Gaze going in aggressive, but actually getting a little bit low. The TP. Ooh, he's just barely going to be able to make it out. Bimbersol. China. Ooh, nice little shotgun. Deals a lot of damage into the puck here. Gonna be getting really low, but still wants to chase. And ooh, oh, takes him down with the shotgun. So a nice catch here from the Timbersol. Gonna be able to take him down and is going to be able to TP out. So all in all, a uh, okay, the fight recap doesn't show it anymore. But uh, that was a lot of kills going all the way. That I think it was uh, was Jakiro and Puck for. Primal Beast and an Io. 
It was gonna be a two for two, actually. I mean, equal trade overall, but of course, Medusa was not farming during that fight. Did have to TP back to base. Meanwhile, Pudge was just farming up nice and good. Another Reaper Scythe stack for Necro as well, so he's going to be getting very close to his Radiance now. Once they have that, that's going to make their damage rolls seem a lot more potent. But setting up a gank now onto the Pudge, maybe, but. Catches with the mid lane. Dream Coil under the mid lane. Primal Beast taking a lot of damage here. He's going to onslaught away, but the damage over times is enough, and he goes down. And Puck as well. Able to A shift off that Pugna. Uh, life drain. Not not the greatest matchup for the life drain, because he has two ways of canceling, three ways of canceling, I think, even with the loser yard. So, not the easiest. And, uh,. Two really nice kills here for the Dire, and they're going to be able to turn that into a mid tower as well. So, some really nice pickups here. And Puck is going to be able to finish his Witchblade now, which should give him a lot more potential to get these kills. Necrophos getting very, very close to his Radiance now. Should have that done very soon. And Pudge with the eyes coming up as well. That's going to be some some heavy duty damage coming out here for the Dire. A Tim Result does finish up his own pipe, so I should be able to mitigate things a little bit. Primal Beast looking for an onslaught in with the decrep. Lots of damage coming out. Pulverize as well. The life drain on top. And uh, Jiro is tanky, but not that tanky. Is going to be slammed into the ground by Primal Beast. No, looking potentially for the Necro as well. Primal Beast is making his rotation over. They. You see this on the ward, but uh, here comes that onslaught. Quite a bit of damage here. Uh, trample as well. Radiance is finished, but uh, he's living, living quite long. Background dodge as well. He's going to turn with their scythe onto the Io and able to take that one down. So pulverize, slamming him, but not a, enough damage quite yet. The ice path is not connected. He's still alive. Finally, he goes down. Primal Beast, on the other hand, is taking. It's taken too long, the backup is here now from the Dire. Gonna be able to take down one. Tipper Saul getting very low and is going to take down as go down as well. So a free for one here and the Necrophos with a the fleet feet just uh, dodging a lot of these fells and in the end is able to buy enough time to not only take down the Io with the Radiance, but even get his team in to get those other two kills. And now they're going to be pressuring the tier two here with this siege creep. So Really nice place on the Necro. Unfortunate, just connections just barely not hitting there from the Radiant. It's going to cost them a lot. No glyph, so. And it's the tier 2 down. Pugna, on the other hand, is pressuring top lane, though, so he's going to be able to get some damage back, but the hook right on target is going to be able to. Yeah, is it enough damage? Ooh, it's a. It's close, it's close, but he is going to go down. That Ags, Ags Rock Dota just uh, doing a little bit too much damage for the Pugna to heal off, so. The cloak, not enough to keep him alive. And he will go down, and it's another flesh heap into the pocket of the Pudge, and a, a 4k gold beat overall now for the Radiant. So Medusa is getting quite far, but he's going to go into the Scabby next, actually. I'll, I'll think to go for a bit of a tankier strat rather than a. A more damage focused strat. I'm not sure if I like that personally. I feel they may have some damage issues going forward against this Pudge and this Necro. Or rather, if they don't have enough damage, they will be. They won't be able to to win against the sustain of the Necro. Going into the 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 mech next, actually on Necro. So an interesting build up here with the greedy radiance into the more team oriented Greaves next. I I actually quite like it. I think it's really good. This is just what they need on this one. As a team, he's going to be able to secure his own scaling while also letting his team fall forward. So, some nice pickups, and Medusa actually getting a little bit too close here. He's going to get spotted out by the Jakiro, who does have a heal scepter. Oh, but the hook gets blocked by the puck going to the Dream Coil. He's going to get a Ooh, massive onslaught through the middle with the pulverize. Ooh, the pipe keeps him alive as well. The, the BKB comes out now, and they're taking a lot of damage here. They're just getting. Not able to take anyone down on the dire, and 
Whirling Death finishing off Necro. Jiro going to go down as well, and in the end, the only one alive is this Klinks, and they only get a Primal Beast, so... Going in just a little bit too deep, and the Radiant punish it hard, and that's that's the whole gold lead just wiped out now for the Dire. In the meantime, Pugna still split pushing. It's <clears throat> gonna keep blasting down this tower. It's a lot of damage, and Puck is gonna be forced to keep it over. There is a Glimmer Cape on the Courier, but it gets sniped out, so. No Glimmer for the Pugna, but he does have a TP. And no Dream Coil, so he won't be able to cancel that, and he is going to be able to get out. So, a lot of chaos here being caused by this Pugna. Ow. Dyer might have to rethink their approach into these fights. Uh, the BKB up for the uh, the Primal Beast. He's, he's going to be a lot harder to take down before he deals his damage. And they're they're going to need a pipe of their own. And they are going to be queuing it up on Pudge, but it is a long ways away. I'll take the Tormentor on the backside, so that, that'll get them something. Pugna has TP back to base and is right back ready to get his own split push on again. In the meantime, Medusa is just going to keep getting more and more fun. Oh, hook out onto the Pug, Pug uh, though, and Pug, not even a hook actually, he just blinks on top of him with his member, and uh, he's going to be able to take him down nice and easy. So that's a fleshy pair, still carrying the Tumblr's toy around, curiously. But he'll be replacing him soon. Torments are going to be taken by Radiant as well. Get them a shard on the Pugna, which is a pretty good one. Gets the AoE life drain. Maybe not as good as the bonus spell and spell life steal on the overcharge, the IO. When uh, combined with the Primal Beast, it's a lot, but I'm sure they'll be fine with it. In the meantime, I think the. Yeah, it looks like Clegg's got the Tormentor or the shard on the other side, so it's going to be the Burning Barrage up. Probably won't uh, change his uh, strategy at all here. Dyer is going to actually look to push again here, but you know, I'll have to be careful of this Primal Beast going in. Oh, no. A lot of chaos this whole time. They actually didn't take the, the Wisdom Room when they're taking the Tormentor, inter interestingly enough. Okay, he's going to ping that out and pick that up. Fuck. Going to be gone on here, maybe. A smoke coming out, but no, they're gonna opt to go for that easier to Kiro kill. Pulverize comes out. Does have a Yule though, with an Ice Bath on top. He's gonna be able to make some space. But Primal Beast just. Double do Actually, they, they give up. They, they're not. They're too scared to chase onto the high ground into a possible dire ambush. So the smoke gank for Radiant is just going to fail. And they're, they're farming up a storm here on the dire. Back up to a. 3k lead already, uh, 2k lead now, but the hook onto the Pugna is going to be getting them another flesh heap. This Pugna just getting uh, fed on a little bit here. This Pudge, second pick Pudge, like we're getting really big. Might have been a third pick Pudge. Yeah, it was a third pick Pudge. But third pick Pudge, getting really big here. On the on I don't know if he's supposed to be a carry or an offline. I think they're just sharing. Sharing is caring after yeah, all. Yeah, sharing is caring. Uh, and oh, zero nine of the Pugna. Not, not the, uh, the best we're in. Just getting hunted down by this Pudge in all of these fights. This Puck as well, just being so obnoxious. So he gets this Glimmer, it'll be uh, a bit easier for him to move around. The Curious Knife, quite annoying. Pipe nearly finished there for Pudge, just uh, 50 gold off, but they're actually catching an ambush here potentially. Onto the Medusa, comes out with the, the relocate. No, it's not gonna be any relocate, but the Stone Gaze buys a lot of time and the Onslaught comes straight through and just trunks this Pudge down into the ground. The Timbersaw finishes him off, pulverized, doing a lot of damage. Puck trying to come in and cover them, but on the cover of this pipe, they just have so much health that Nether Ward takes him down before he can Reaper Scythe, so. That's going to be another one fight here for the Radiant, and the Dire just uh, not quite having the damage output to deal with this. To deal the damage through this pipe, this Mystic Snake, and the Primal Beast just 
absolutely laying into them on these tramples through these onslaughts. Uh, he's going to be the pup, the, the pipe up now for the uh, dire, so that may help them a little, sustain a little bit into this, into this trample. On the other hand, Medusa looking to build into that silver edge next, and there's that damage, is, the physical damage is coming out on top of the magic damage. It make it very difficult for the dire to play these fights, even more so than it already is. And after all, this just. Uh, all of these cores on the, the Dire are just so tanky. Necrophos, what have you gone on here? He has a bite, he has a neck and the, the magic wand, and now actually Primal Beast has gone a little bit too deep, and it is going to get scythed into the floor after that dismember, so... A little bit too forward there from the Primal Beast, and is going to be punished by the Dire, and now... Chasing forward, they, they want something juicier, they want the Medusa. They have eyes on her, but... He is going to be forced back in the end. Clink's going to scout them out, but... Uh, oh, Pugna, cutting this wave here is going to be a little bit annoying, but does not manage to catch him. Get the blink out in time, but Glimmer keeps him alive for a little bit, but he goes down in the end, so... Uh, it's going to be a two for one here for the Dire, and that's two extra flesh heaps. And Reaper Scythe as well. Permanent scaling, really. Ramping up, and now they're going to be walk walking straight into Roche, taking that for themselves. So, definitely a good turn of events here for the Dire. But in the meantime, this Medusa is still just continuing to farm up. It's getting very scared. Maybe need to pick up the terms of guard as well, potentially, in the, in the Dire. Oh, they are still. They're building into a halberd here on Necro, so that'll be able to stop her a little bit. Not finishing up the Greaves, though. Might just be sticking to that neck. Be picking up the Aegis as well, confirming that he is the carry for sure. They opted just to help his team out with the one item and the rest. The rest is up to the team, you know. going to be going out Talisman, but Pugna once again on the bottom lane just being so annoying with the split push. And he's going to be able to take down the tier 2 here. Glyph comes out, buys a little bit of time. But Pugna of course will be able to just go into another blast, but Puck actually, he wants to try and stop this, but ooh, with the Glimmer he gets the... managed to sneak past and get the nether blast, ooh but doesn't get the blink off in time, so... Puck. Ah, oh, but he doesn't have any detection, so in the end, Pugna will be able to make his escape. Yep. It looks like eh, he will be getting out in the meantime. This is just completely taking the wind off that push from the Dire that was coming through. So it's some, or it's some really nice splitting place coming here from the Pugna. It's not going to get caught either, just being so pesky with that blink glimmer. Although, they see him now, they are going to be able to get the blink this man so finally going to be able to take this pesky, pesky Pugna down. But uh, it's a lot of time bought here from the Pugna. And just, it's constantly just more time to get this Medusa big. Ah. I'm going to be building into Shiva's guard next, Pudge, so I'm going to be able to... Oh, the... The hook just barely misses out. And in the end, they will not be able to get the kill of this eye or this Medusa, so. Do we find it just walk out? Time. Primal Beast pushing into that top lane a bit. Fortunately, there's no pug nuts to push there this time. Fuck, is going to be forced to back off again, so. Split push very effective at tempering the storm that is uh, Dyer's ball here. They may be setting up onto this timber saw. Things come out and they get the blink out straight on to him. So, are they going to be able to deal with damage? Scythe comes in, does not finish him off, but not enough to get him out. But now the oh, the massive onslaught through the two of them again, and that's going to be both supports going down just like that. So, a great punish from the Radiant. It's going to be. 
be uh, doing a little bit of wave cutting here on the puck. Just get some press split pressure into the top lane. Necro is going to be able to TP out, so it's going to be two supports for the off lane here. And the support is really getting run down by this Primal Beast pick. Yeah, having a having a tough time dealing with it. He's going to be building into an Ags next for Jakiro, so it's going to be a lot of damage coming out, at least on the macro pyre. He's going to be able to pierce through that pipe and just deal straight up damage. Puck. Going to be uh, getting away from this Pugna here. Oh. Things forwards. But uh, the cover of the Glimmer KP will be able to walk out, so just a. Uh, couple of barely tussles going through here. In the end is it's starting to look very favorable for the Radiant here. This Medusa is getting so so big. Already 2k up after the after finishing up that silver edge. To be uh, considering what to buy next. It's not really a a physical damage to either. You won't be needing a butterfly or anything. I wouldn't mind seeing a mage slayer come out potentially on the Medusa. Especially if she gets a 25 later, be able to really temper the damage of uh, of this dire line. But it's almost almost all magical. Now some pings coming out on the pudge. They see him walking through, but it will be good to just walk away. So we'll be fine. I'm going to oh, where did this cardi come from? Hmm. Uh, to be taken with dire here back up. Taking a little bit though, but they do manage to take him down, and that's going to be the, the Death Seeker coming for the Necrophos, so that's quite a nice pickup. But now here comes the here comes the push behind the Medusa, which is so far now. The Pug now sitting there as well, blasting. It's going to be very hard to take her down. They are actually setting up for a hook, but Aegis is going to expire. And Necrophos goes forward a little bit, it's taking a lot of damage. Trample comes through as well over the top. BKB pulverize damage. No, oh, the hook comes out, but it's not in time. He goes down on the on Necro. So that's their sustain down. And now, is there anything to stop the Radiant from just pushing forward? Huck goes in a little bit aggressive here. Ooh, a nice hook comes out on the Medusa, but did they have the damage into our Pugna? He's actually going to get blasted down by the, the, the rods and the clings. Now, not able to take down Medusa. Clings. Maybe taking a little damage from the Chakra. I was actually going to go down as well to the fuck on the back line, so. Nice. Nice poking here coming out from the Dire, and he's going to be able to force the Radiant back. They're actually looking for more clings. Skulking around. It's very scary. This primal beast. So tanky. Such high damage as well. Fuck. Just going to farm up the wave. And in the end, it will be a retreat. So a nice hold coming out from the from the dire, but in the end they the only kills they get are the are the supports and not those uh, very fed cores. Just keep getting bigger. But Clinks is starting to approach his, his nullifier, which makes it a lot easier to take down uh, some of these supports. We'll cancel out the barrier as well from the, the pipes, so it should be a lot easier to focus down single targets. Radio going to run into the jungle here. Medusa's going to TP out, but that leaves a timber so maybe uh, just a little bit too tanky for a Clinks to deal with. He's going to use his Ogre Seal Totem. But it looks like he's feeling the heat as well, so he's just going to retreat back to his base and will be fine. No primal beast though, he's walking into the jungle here. He's going to spot the Necrophos. The onslaught out. Going to be able to make the distance and the blink from Pudge misses out. Gonna pick out some vision that's unfortunately not quite there. Puck is going to be uh, anti split push duty again here. Oh, but the. Pugna blinks straight on top of him, but doesn't really have the, the force to deal into him, but is, is he gone a bit too far here on Pugna? Oh, the decrep! She stops the Medusa from hitting, and that's the stone gaze used as well. Oh, connect! He will be able to take down the Pugna, but now Primal Beast, he's made his way back over. 
Gonna be laying in with the pulverize and for the pudge, but pudge is quite tanky. Puck won't be able to make his way out, so in the end it is going to be the pug not going down. All the spells used, but not too much happening now though. Necrophos looking forward again, but this Dusa just dealing so much damage into him. Reeves comes out, he's going to find a little time, but Medusa blinks straight forward into the Necro. The, Cyp oh, the Reaper Cypher's going to come down, but not quite able to take down the the Primal Beast straight away. The Necrophos does go down, but Medusa, she got in a little bit too deep here. The dust comes out, a lot of damage, but the Dismember is back up, and yeah, it looks like they've pushed too far forward, and they're going to get five man wiped here. By the Dire, a very nice hold on the tier 2, and just a little bit too deep from the Radiant, and they get punished for it. Puck now going to be building into a Deso actually, seeing that these supports are actually very low on armor, so maybe able to just force them down with the attacks, and it's going straight out onto the Puck now already. Ooh, he's going to be able to get a blink out, so he will be fine. Gonna try to chase on Puck, but goes the wrong way, and... Pugna will be good to go, but he doesn't have a TP, so won't be able to come back and defend this base, which is getting pummeled by these two siege creeps. Jukiro is, of course, uh, the liquid fire, always going to be able to stop that tower from killing anything. So. Puck going to keep. Uh, is keep. He's still occupied zone, so it's Pugna split push. He's going to be able to get the ward there on the high ground, but. Still just doesn't have any detection, so... Oh, but he's under the sentry range! He's under the sentry range, and because of that, the Pugna will go down. So, Puck getting another kill here, and he's going to buy out for his Deso. And that's going to be a lot of damage into that Pugna. Clink's going to be building into the Halberd next as well, so... Going to be more, uh... More ways of stopping this Medusa, but that is a full Swift Blink now, so... He's going to be able to deal that damage very quickly and on demand, really. Pudge looks like uh, he's got a Vit Booster queued up. I reckon that would probably be a uh, yeah, it's Crimson Guard on his courier. So uh, gonna be looking to weather storm even more there. Identifying as Medusa, his damage is really big, and oh, the catch onto the IO drops. The Reaper's type into him straight away, but are they in a good position now to fight? The Primal Beast comes through the back, but they both get caught by the Dream Coil, and Medusa is getting very low on mana. It's going to get decrept here, and nice pulverized, but it gets cancelled by the Ice Path. Ooh, Necrophos getting a little bit low, but is able to make his escape. And Timbersaw now. Ooh, the Timber Chain gets cancelled by that dismember, and now they're pushing forward very quickly. But the Pudge is going to be able to catch a hook up to the Pugnan. Yeah. Dusa has to back out to get it with the Primal Beast, and that's that's free down. And the Deso, actually, that Deso pickup going to make their push so much faster as well. So, uh, pretty smart pickup here by the Pug. It's going to let them. He's going to win on this team fight and let them very quickly take this base together with the Clanks and just absolutely shred it. Medusa, what can she do? Building into the... Building into an MKB next to try and pierce through some of these halberds, but... It's going to be enough. It's going to be doing some good damage here. What's the ice path though? Gets healed up. And in the end, Dyer are just going to retreat altogether. Smoke up as well. It looks like... Uh, yeah, there, it's just going to be a Rax. And now a 12k gold lead for the Dyer. Looking very good for them. And, Warwick Ducklings, what are what is their answer for this? Going to head into Roche now. Age is not not that great for this lineup, but I'll definitely make it a bit easier for this this Necro to play forward. He's going to be building up I did. He's actually finished the Yule and he's going to be building into a Wind Waker next to the Necro, so that will allow him to create this distance while getting gone on. Now Radiant is running over to try and get them. They're trying to do something with the stone gaze. They're going to head in with the trap run. Dusa blinks into the pit. And he's going to start hitting into Roche, but gets bashed here, actually. In the meantime, Io has already gone down. Heaven's Halberd comes up, stopping her from finishing off this 
Uh, this Roche, and now with the duels up to the air, they are going to be able to take the Aegis on Hudge, but they're also stacked up. They're taking a lot of damage from the Medusa and the Fimbersol. Fimber, the Sacrum is going to come through the middle, but are they able to finish anyone off? This member now comes out of Medusa. She has the cheese. Is going, going to be able to get it off. The Pug now trying to beat her up as he can, but she has no team left. Just completely surrounded by the team in the Dire, and they're going to smoke up and head straight for the base. There's a a five man wipe, they have the Aegis. I did, they lost the Aegis. No, no, they didn't. Stand up. He still has the Aegis, so. They have everything on, on the Dire. And a very scrappy team fight, but they come out on top in the end. Just not quite enough damage. And Medusa goes in to try and get that steal in the pit. Villainess Halbert comes out, stalling her time, and the team just can't keep up with her in there. Pugna and the Ayo just get caught out. Really nice focusing there from the Ayo. It's going to be able to get them this tower at the very least. Puck pushing in the bottom lane as well. Almost level 25, so. It's going to be uh, the piercing and debuff immunity, most likely. And then it'll be, it'll be even harder for this, this Primal Beast to play these fights. It's going to go down to the bottom lane now. 25 more seconds for this. This do set to be up and no buyback at all, so it looks like it's just going to be mega creeps for the dire. Hook comes out but only connects onto the melee creep there. Pugna gets forced back for the puck blink in. 12 Desa charges now. Really stacking those up quickly, Medusa jumps in. The Mystics make off nice. Dodge on the hook there for the middle. But Dyer looks like they're just going to be backing off on the cover of that Crimson Guard. Top causing a little bit of chaos where he can in the back line, but he's getting very low and the Pulverize actually comes out and he's they're going to take him down. The puck goes down and that's uh, that's a lot of their team fight poke out of the way. Ooh, Clinks trying to get that catch on the puck on the bottom lane, but not able to get that and it's going to be uh Two men going down here for the Dyer, so the Radiant still in this game. They're holding on. However, uh, Mega Creeps are coming in. It will be hard, but they, they are going to make a charge down mid actually. They want to get some kind of revenge at least. At the very least, for some buybacks. They're just charging straight forward, and the Dyer, are they. Be ready for this. They don't have a buyback on Puck. Do you have a buyback on on the Clinks, however? Pudge. Are they standing ready on the high ground? But completely alone, so won't be able to uh, hold them back here. They still have left up. They still have one reset as well, so they'll be able to buy some time. Jukiro. Looks like he cut the wave in the middle, so they don't actually have a wave here. Between its two glyphs, they. They won't be able to get any major building damage. They may be able to take this rags, but it looks like they're uh, they're feeling the heat and they are going to back off here. The Warwick ducklings. TP out from Medusa and cover the Shadow Blade. We'll be able to make it up. So they manage to retreat, but they only take one tower and they do have Mega Creeps against them. Adris still up for a, a minute and 10 seconds here. Pudge. See if he does anything but with that, but so tanky. It's just the too difficult for the Radiant to take him down ever. These fights. Looks like uh, they are going to play it safe on the Dire. Be, uh, picking up yeah, with the run here on the Pudge, giving him his 25. And I'll take the Tormentor as well. So it's going to be uh, the Liquid Frost coming out for Jakiro. Uh, we'll, it'll be a nice stun against these. These beefy frontliners. Cool. Wind Waker on the Jakiro. Yeah, full Wind Waker, dude. He, he knows what he needs. It's a I Wind assume, Waker, apparently. I, yeah, I presume it's uh, if if this puck ever gets caught up by the pulverize, you can just save him yeah, up into that's... the air. And it, it is hard enough for them to catch this puck one time, but I mean, and you catch now the they're going to have times, two Wind Wakers. Yeah, it is going to be very difficult for them, and the the puck, the punch has to shard as well, so. A lot of potential saves coming out here for the Dire. The 
HS is going to be expiring, so won't be getting any uh, additional mileage out of that. I'm sure they'll be happy with the spoils they've gotten for the dire here. Uh, where's back into his base? Just a uh, primal beast will be on the outskirts trying to get some farm up. They are able to keep these waves decently pushed out though between the Medusa and the Timursa and the Pugna. A lot of damage coming out, so they, they are able to easily deal with these mega creeps. God. <laughs> mega range creeps just two shot that range creep. <laughs> Did not stand the chance against his bigger brother there on the other side. Bigger, badder, worser brother. Um, what even is that? Um, Necrophos here. What's he sending out? It's going to be an Aghanim Scepter coming out for Necro, so going to be that Ghost Shroud cooldown. Going to be able to uh, keep him alive even longer just in the front lines under this, this Medusa's nose. Of course, this has been. How much is it? Doesn't say anywhere in the village. Small indie company. Oh, but a go here. We find the Jakiro and the Wind Waker. Oh, will not be able to get him to the low ground, so he's going to get cut down. But on the meantime, they catch Primal Beast in the top lane. The Tar Bomb <laughs> will be his grave. He's building into a Scythe now on the Clancy. He's actually charging straight forward. We want the Pug now, but uh, we'll be able to blink out in time. Timbersaw is going to uh, push as far forward as he can here in the mid lane. Trying to keep those creeps off them as long as he can and maybe get a little bit closer to that side of Vice. He needs so bad to catch his puff. Oh, for Pudge, he is, uh, he's feeling himself. He's running straight in together with his necro friend. Some damage comes out there from the Deuce. He's going to force them away from the tower here. but. Oh, and the jump in within his member, onto the, straight onto the Medusa, and the, the coil onto the backline as well. A lot of damage coming out, the Crimson Guard not yet pops, now it comes out. And not a lot of damage, Wind Waker, going to be able to get him out, but Pudge, he's in the middle, he's taking a lot of damage. He's going to be able to get his member up, he is healing for 1.8 times as much, and the Scythe slams the Primal Beast into the ground, so one man down, and... There is no buyback up on him. He's already used it to start his fight, so. Here's a dieback. Going forward on Necro. As much of his heat as he can. Feeling a lot tankier than before. And oh, the jump into the eye on the back lines. They were able to catch him, but Pudge goes down in the meantime. It's cut down by the Whirling Death. And now, they're laying into the Necro. He's under the sentry, so. Are we getting anything out of that Invis? Go Shroud buys him a little bit of time, but. No chasing, and. Oh, jumps over to the clings of the back line, but. In the meantime, though, the Wind Waker is able to get Necro onto the high ground. It's going to channel the Washer there. Um, clutch, clutch. Hey, you gotta, you gotta do it to him sometimes. In the end, Timbersaw will be forced to back off. Oh, Jigiro chasing over the cliff with the Wind Waker, but does not connect on the stun. And now, Medusa actually, he's, he's onto the Jigiro. The Wind Waker will hold on for a little bit longer, but he's going to be up now. Find some distance, but do so with Scotty is going to be able to catch up and take him down. So Jakiro, the aggressive down, wind waker they, play not paying off. They they hold once again on the radiant. Duck looking to maybe catch a cheeky kill onto the Pugna. Oops! The Stormcrafter actually gives away his position here on Pugna, but not gonna be able to deal enough burst damage here on the Pugna. Take him down. He has a, actually has the Agnum Scepter, so. We'll be able to uh, do a lot of damage with the right click build. And he's going to look forward into the IO here. The team going rapid fire, doing a lot of damage, but the. Uh, oh, wait, it's still coming? Uh, he'll be fine under cover the D crap, so Pugna keeps his, uh, keeps his buddy alive here. And they will be going to live another day. Gonna do a little bit of damage into this Pug. But he'll be able to blink out in the end. So, uh. Uh, another good hold here by the Raiden, keeping themselves in this game. Would you, <laughs> would you say this has triple-digit potential, Ryan? 
Well, we are seeing potential Mega. Well, is that already Mega? Creeps? It's already Mega Creeps. Yeah, it's already Mega that Creeps. Mega Creeps, Medusa. That is Rafier. always going to be triple digit potential. It's going to be a Rafe here coming out as well for the Medusa. Oh, but the courier. Uh, this, this this game might end soon. I would say above uh, 60 minutes, probably not triple digit though. Yeah, uh, courier does get sniped though for the Medusa, so he won't be able to get out. And now, Pugna is going to be able to get the far stuff off for the another fire connect, so he'll be fine. But now, Pug walks right into a gank here from the Radiant. He's going to get pulverized and unslaughtered, and he's he goes down. So, Puck once again caught out here. And Radiant just makes some really nice moves. And themselves, uh, not even uh, they're able to move out on the base still onto the onto the map. However. I is going to be looking for the Roshan, but Roshan is going to be looking to leave. It is going to be stomping over them a little bit. Are going to keep rotting him down. And this member comes through as well. They want they don't want to let him leave. They wanna take him down when they can. But yeah. In the end, however, they are going to be forced to just take the portal to the other side together with Roche. Oh, but <laughs> the ice pass actually cancels it. <laughs> Roche will be staying here for a little bit longer. Which actually might buy time for the Dyer to make their move here. Wind Waker going to buy some time for the Jakiro. He'll be able to move his way out. The Rapier is up for Medusa and this <laughs> holding the Roche might have actually might have actually worked against them here. They are going to get the nullifier out on the Pugna, so he's going to go down. Does have a buyback, but not opting to use it quite yet. However, Medusa is killing this space really quickly. This is Roshan. He's actually going to walk out for a little bit on Rosh, but Dash comes out, and they are going to take the Aegis, but oh, he, he took the refresher shot instead. Okay, he has, he has the Aegis now. And with that Rapier, he's doing a lot of damage. Remember, he's able to take down the eye on the back line, but Pudge no longer able to stand into this firepower of the Medusa with the Rapier and Necrophos. Good force to use his Wind Waker and get out. And the Scythe comes out on the pub and the Pulverize as well, but the damage isn't quite enough. And Necrophos turns around and actually takes out. And the Medusa, very low on mana, is going to fall to that Dream Coil Rapid Fire. Radiant, they may have they may have gone a little bit too far. So he's going to take one down. Still has the cheese. That's the buybacks coming out from the die. They want to secure this rapier. They want to give them a chance, but the result also buying back. And this Necro just able to continuously just play and toy with his Medusa. He's going to give him a couple taps, but in the end he's going to be able to swift blink out. And he is going to get away, but Timbersol. Oh wait, the base! The base! Oh, I didn't even notice Puck. He went back into the base and it's just... Uh, with the Mega Creeps and the, the Siege Creeps. He's able to take down the base. A bit of a... Uh, trash talk coming out here in, the, in all chat. But in the end... Uh, a valiant effort here from the Radiant. They will get some really good fights out. But I almost feel bad for Medusa getting the Rapier with the Aegis. And still just losing the fight. Yeah, just getting too much, getting kind of way too much. But he's, uh, he's, he's really nice item pickups from the Dyer, to be honest. Just knowing exactly what to pick up to kite out this Medusa, even when she has her APR damage. And the end. Uh, some really nice poking fights here from the Dyer is able to push them over the edge, get them to the items they needed to, to kite out this Medusa, take out this Primal Beast, and. And to win them the game. So, big props to them. Uh, a well earned victory. Uh, I hope to see them uh, pull out the same thing in game two with this best of two rounded up. I think they've already won the best of two, though, haven't they? Oh, that's true, actually, my bad. Uh... Things considered a pretty good best of two. Big lead, but still a close match, regardless. Yes, very true, very true. And always come back potential. Of that, we'll be sending it over to the panel. <laughs> <laughs> to the panel. For some uh, high level analysis. Uh, take it out. Yeah.